Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of the user-based community site tutorial series. Um, just want to apologize in advance for um, how long it's been since I've been able to make a video. Just has some stuff going on and I just have finally gotten time to start uh, part 5. So let's get started. We're going to do the user login. Um, a couple of things we need to do uh, before we start. We're going to update the activation script um, because I forgot when we activate the uh, user that we're not updating the date activated field. So over here uh, we're going to open up uh, activation.php in your root directory and right here where it says set um, activated equal to one we're going to put a comma and we're going to put date underscore activated equal to um, now without any um, single quotes at all. Okay, and now that we have that, I'm going to close out our activation.php script. And the next thing you'll notice is uh, we want to add session start to each page. Since this is going to be a user-based site, we're going to need to track our users using sessions. And the easiest way that we're going to do this, we're just going to create a new file, open and close PHP blocks, and we're going to put session underscore start, uh, open and close parentheses, and a semicolon. We're going to save this as init init.php init.php and then over here on our index page at the top four page title we're just going to uh, require once init.php this way on all of our pages that we copy um, we're going to include this at the top and that way our session will be started on every page let's go ahead and create our menu so we're going to need to head over to header.php and we're just going to put a new link after here and we're just going to say a href equals login.php and we're going to give it a title of login save that we'll go over here and refresh our page and you can see we have login right there now we need to create login.php so go ahead and create a new file open and close or I'm sorry, we're just going to copy what's in our index page for now, paste it in, save it as login.php. We're going to change this to say login page. And we're going to clear out the content inside the header and the footer. Go ahead and save that and switch over here to your browser, click login and as you can see we have a blank page. Now we're going to go back over to our login.php script and we're going to create a form. We're going to say div id equals login. We're going to align equal to center. Close off our div. And we're just going to give it an h3 tag and say login, oops, login below. I'm having problems typing today apparently. Close our h3 tags and uh, put a line break and then we're going to open a uh, form up give it an action equal to um, question mark login and our method will be equal to post close off our form tag inside there we're just going to give it a paragraph tag and email and inside the paragraph tag, we're going to do an input type equal to text, name equal to pass or email, value. We're just going to leave that blank for a second. Close off our input tag. Close off our paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, duplicate this line. We're going to change email to password. Change our type over to password. Name over to password. Leave the value the same right now, or as nothing. And we'll close that off just like it is. I'll open another paragraph tag. Um, and we're going to say uh, input type equals submit, value equals submit uh, credentials, something along those lines. And give it a name equal to login underscore, or submit underscore login. Close off our input tag, close off our paragraph. And now we're going to go over to login and refresh. 
and as you can see it looks really bland right now so we're going to open up our um, CSS style page so we want to go into our CSS folder open up custom.php or custom.css and we're at the bottom underneath the hidden class right here we're gonna go pound sign login to get the div that we assigned an ID of login we're gonna give it a width equal to 300 pixels and that'll be all for that div and then we're gonna um, locate the paragraph tags within that div we're gonna give them a padding of 4 pixels and we're gonna text align right and then we're gonna um, locate the paragraph tags and then we're gonna imp uh, do the inputs within those paragraph tags uh, with type equal to text and this is just a, a square bracket and then type equal to text and then end square bracket and then comma uh, go to the div again paragraph tag and input and then we need type equal to password so that way it's uh, targeting the input password and the text type and I'm going to give those both a width of 200 pixels okay go ahead and save it refresh and it should look just like that So now we can close out our custom, or custom CSS page. And right now when we click our form, nothing happens. It just goes up here. It says login.php, uh, question mark, login. So that's what we're going to be using as our um, field that we want to check for is that login. So back over on login.php, uh, right under the page description, we're going to set up a couple variables called login underscore error equal to nothing. We're going to give an email variable equal to nothing. We're just initializing variables here. We're going to do password equal to nothing. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say if is set the get variable of login which is right here when you process the form it's looking for this uh, word right here login. What we need to do is, first thing, we're going to include our connection file. So include once, uh, go into our scripts folder, uh, connect.php, and then we're going to um, gather our posted variables from our form, and we're going to say email equals, and we're just going to apply a couple filters here. We're just going to say strip tags, and then MySQL real escape string, and this will provide some basic um, filtering and security for our posted variables of our posted variable of email. Make sure you close off your um, parentheses. And we're going to do the same thing for password. So copy this line, just change email to password and posted variable to password. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a, a MySQL query. So we're going to say SQL is equal to MySQL query. And two parentheses inside of those, we're going to do two double quotes. And we're going to say select email, comma, username, comma, password from users where email is equal to two single quotes and password is equal to two single quotes and activated is equal to one and we're going to say limit one and now with inside those single quotes we're going to put two double quotes and two periods inside of there and we're going to put our email variable same thing with passwords except with our password we're going to since we're using md5 encryption we need to check for the MD5 encrypted password. So MD5, open and close parentheses, and then put our password variable inside there. Okay, then we need to check to see if the 
mysql uh, underscore num underscore rows of our SQL query is equal to one, which means there is um, a record that has been found with the email and password provided, we're going to do this. Else, we'll put our little error checking here. We're just going to say dollar sign login underscore error is equal to invalid credentials. Okay. And if there is a user, we're going to set up the row is equal to mysql underscore fetch underscore soch of our query. And then we're going to set some session variables. We're going to say dollar sign underscore session of email is equal to dollar row uh, username. We're just gathering information from the database and populating our session variables with it. Do the same thing for username. And we're also going to do the password equal to password. Okay, and then we're going to redirect the index page. We're going to say header, open close parentheses, double quotes inside of there. We're going to type location, uh, colon, index.php. And then we're going to exit our script. Okay, and since we have that and we've exited our script, you're probably wondering where this login error variable comes in. So down here under our form, we're going to make some modifications of that. So inside our value of email, we're going to open and close PHP uh, blocks. And since we're going to get posted variables and we want to retain our data if it's not correct, we're just going to echo out uh, the username variable that has been posted. Or I'm sorry, that username. Email. And then same thing with the password. We're just going to echo out password. So that way it retains the data. And in between the last paragraph tag and this uh, submit input, we're going to do a check. We're going to say open and close PHP blocks. We're going to say if is set our login error. And we're going to do two and signs, which and. And then we're going to say login error underscore error does not equal nothing. So basically if there's a value set which we're setting right here, login error is equal to invalid credentials, it'll show up. So after your parentheses, put two curly braces and inside there we're going to say echo to single quote or double quotes, semicolon inside the double quotes we're going to type font color equal to um, FF0000 which is a red color and we're going to say style is uh, margin right 10 pixels. Close that off. And then go to the end of the double quotes. Put a period. And we're going to append our login error variable there. Put a period again. Open the close uh, two double quotes again. And inside there, we're just going to close off our font tag. Okay, so let's go back over here and refresh our page. And we're just going to click login. It's actually click. Okay, we're going to hit submit credentials and undefined function. Okay, I spelled that wrong. So back over in login.php. Up here, I forgot an L. Make sure you spell that right. Oops. And then I accidentally closed it out. Uh, go back and open up login again. Okay. Go back, hit login, hit submit credentials, and as you can see, I didn't enter anything, so invalid credentials. Hit email, and I'm going to put in my email, which is admin at timkiptutorials.com. My password should be 123, but I'm going to put 12345. Submit, invalid credentials. Our password and email stay, to sa stay the same, so I'm going to put 123, and we're going to submit. And now we're back to the index.php. Okay, um, next thing we need to do, we're going to say if 
um, where we are logged in, we don't want to see register and login, we want to see a logout script. So back here in header.php, we're going to, uh, right after the break here and the registration link, we're going to go down a couple lines and we're going to open and close some PHP blocks. And we're going to say if is set session underscore or dollar sign underscore session of e email. So this is checking to see if the session email has been started. We're going to do this or else we need to echo out the registration link and the login page. So we're going to copy or cut that out. And in the else block, we're going to echo two single quotes semicolon inside the single quotes, we're just going to paste that back in. And then if in the first if statement, so we are logged in, we're going to say echo two single quotes. We're going to say h, oops, a link, a href, we're going to say equal to um, question mark logout. And then we're just going to log out and then close off our link, save it, go back and refresh. And as you can see, we have log out, hit log out, and we have to handle that. So back over here in our init.php, right under session start, we're going to say if is set dollar sign get of log out, open and close curly brace. We're going to say session underscore destroy two parentheses and then we're going to say header inside there two double quotes we're going to say location index.php and I'm going to go ahead and exit our script go back to our index page here refresh our page hit logout and as you can see registering and login show up and we can go back and log in one two three submit and we've been logged in so that is part five, and make sure you update your activation script and put the date equal to activated. So over here in uh, activation.php, right here where it says update user set activated equal to one, make sure you add this uh, comma and date activated equal to now in there. And also we created the init.php with added session start, and then uh, checked for the logout script and session destroy, and then sent it back to the home page. So, I hope you enjoyed part five and in part six, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do in part six, but um, I will be doing part six, so I'll catch you next time.